Hi, Grade 8. This is Sir Joachim Di Pimenjola, your teacher of English. And today is a very wonderful day to learn English. But before that, let us all bow our heads and feel the presence of our ultimate creator above. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord, we offer to you our class today. We pray that through your divine supervision, we would learn how to listen attentively to the inputs of our teacher. May we appreciate his effort in imparting his knowledge to us. May we participate actively in the discussions and activities so we could learn more. May we value each idea as a building block towards harmony. Grant that as we have our class, we recognize the fact that all things should be accomplished for your greater glory. As we pursue our hearts and our minds to be better, we ask for your continuous guidance and blessing. All this we ask in your powerful name. Amen. From the most essential learning competencies, our lesson for today is to analyze propaganda techniques. At the end of this lesson, you are expected to define propaganda techniques, distinguish types of propaganda techniques, Recognize propaganda techniques in a material and create a poster that uses propaganda techniques. To start your class, I want you to arrange the jigsaw puzzle to reveal the illustration. When you are done arranging the puzzle, I want you to analyze and observe the illustration. Congratulations in completing the puzzle! What can you tell about the illustration? Is it beautiful? Yes, it is. What country is present in the illustration? Very good. It is our very own country, the Philippines. What can you say about the Philippines based from the illustration? Yes, very good. It has many tourist spots. Do you like it? Very good. I am glad to hear that you like the illustration. What tagline is present in the picture or illustration? When we say tagline, it is the quotation or the message of the picture that you are observing. Can you tell? Very good. The illustration simply says, it's more fun in the Philippines. Is it more fun in the Philippines? Yes, it is. It is indeed more and more fun in the Philippines. In relation to our class, the illustration shows that the country, Philippines, used a technique to influence and encourage the audience or attract tourists to visit the place by presenting beautiful things about their place and using catchy language in order to produce an emotional rather than a rational response to the information that is being presented. In other words, the term, it's more fun in the Philippines, that very tagline is a technique of a propaganda. With your little background about propaganda techniques, 
Let us all have learning task 1. Guess the name of the product or service based on the given tagline. Again, guess the name of the product or service based on the given tagline. Number 1 and number 10 are already done for you as examples. Number 1, it's finger licking good. It is the tagline of KFC. And for number 10, may pasobra dahil special ka. It is the tagline of Rebisco Crockers. Now, let's have number 2 to 9 for your learning task number 1. For number two, the quality you can trust. What do you think is the product or service behind this tagline? Again, number two, the quality you can trust. Very good. The owner of the tagline is the Boysen, the paint company. For number three, we find ways. What is the company behind this tagline? Can you think of something? I'll give you a clue. It is color blue. The company is in color blue. You already get it? Very good. It is the BDO. Next number, the tagline says, we've got it all for you. Again, we've got it all for you. Can you guess the product behind this tagline? We've got it all for you. Very good. It is the place where most people go to when shopping. It is the SM store. Number five, the tagline goes like, Ang tulay ng Filipino. Again, ang tulay ng Filipino. To what company or product or service does this tagline belong to? Very good. It is the pawn shop M. Louillier. Again, it is the pawn shop M. Louillier that says ang tulay ng Filipino. Number six, building champions in life. What product is behind this tagline, building champions in life? I'll give you a clue. The product behind this tagline is a chocolate drink that loves by many people. It is a chocolate drink that loves by many people. Very good. It is Milo. It is Milo. How about the tagline? Para kanino ka bumabangon? Again, para kanino ka bumabangon? Sounds familiar, right? Because we use this product or we consume this product every morning. You may ask your guardians or parents regarding this tagline. I'm sure they are very familiar with it. Very good. It is the Nescafe coffee. Again, the Nescafe coffee. Number eight. What is the product behind the tagline, Pambansang Lichong Manok? Again, what is the product behind the tagline, Pambansang Lichong Manok?
very good. It is undocks. It is undocks. Next number. In the service of the Filipino. In the service of the Filipino. Very good. The tagline belongs to ABS-CBN. It belongs to ABS-CBN. In totality, let's check your work. Number one is finger licking good, KFC. The quality you can trust, Boysen. We find ways, BDO. We've got it all for you, SM Store. Ang tulay ng Pilipino, M. Lowellier. Building Champions in Life Milo Para kanino ka bumabangon? Nescafe Coffee Pambansang Lichong Manok and Docs In Service of the Filipino ABS-CBN May pasobra dahil espesyal ka Rebisco Crackers so those are the taglines and products for our learning task 1. I hope you enjoyed it. In our recent activity, we knew that advertisers use a propaganda technique by creating a tagline that will catch our attention and will likely influence us to buy the product or use their service. So by means of propaganda technique, we are persuaded to buy and use their product. When we say propaganda, it is the information that is used to promote or publicize a particular political issues or point of view. Usually, one-sided information intended to either to support or to threaten that view. It appeals to emotion rather than intellect. Its major purpose is to persuade the audience or the viewers. There are basic types of propaganda technique. 1. Bandwagon 2. Testimonial 3. Tagline 4. Name calling Again, what are the four types of propaganda techniques? 1. Very good. Bandwagon And how do we spell bandwagon? Very good. It's B A N D W A G O N Bandwagon. Number two, it's testimonial. And how do we spell testimonial? Very good. It's T E S T I M O N I A L Testimonial Number 3 Tagline And how do we spell tagline? Close your eyes Don't see it on our lecture very good. It's T A G L I N E. Tagline. And last but not the least, name calling. How do we spell name calling again? Very good. It's N A M E. Then space C A L L I N G Name calling Bandwagon is a propaganda technique that is persuading consumers by telling them that others are doing the same thing. Example Marlon is not a fan of social media because he wants to have face to face conversation. However, Many of Marlon's friends joined social media sites, so he decided to create account as well. Therefore, based from the example, 
when we say bandwagon, if it is trending, then a particular someone is urged or persuaded to do the same thing. Remember our keyword when we say bandwagon, it is trending. Testimonial. Testimonial is a propaganda technique when a product is sold by using words from famous people or authority figures. For example, My skin is so young looking because of this soap, said by Kat Riona Gray. Therefore, the audience or the consumers will tend to buy the product simply because they are persuaded by the tagline of Miss Catriona Gray. Miss Catriona Gray is our Miss Universe. Therefore, she is famous. Therefore, there are so many consumers who would like to have the same soap that she uses. Next, tagline. Tagline is a propaganda technique which used words that will make a consumer feel strongly attached to the product or service. For example, the tagline of Nescafe, Para kanino ka bumabangon? That tagline, that question, is very relatable to the coffee lovers. It is strongly attached to those who are consumers or those who love coffee. So it is very effective. For name calling, it is a propaganda technique which uses words to give a person or idea a bad label. Remember the keyword for name calling, bad label. For example, terrorist, rebel, activist, dictator, racist, and any other bad label that we can use to degrade someone's idea or to persuade a particular product to not consume it. When we do this, it is what we call name calling. As a review about the basic types of propaganda techniques, I want you to look those words or those basic types in our crossword puzzle. Nice one! You got the first one! Very good! You found the bandwagon! Oh, that's the name calling! You found the tagline! Congratulations! Before we proceed to our next activity, I want you to remember that everyone can use propaganda techniques as long as they have an idea or product that they want to be addressed or to be persuaded among viewers and consumers. Once again, I want you to arrange the jigsaw puzzle to see the illustration. After that, analyze it and answer the given questions. This one is easy. It has only four pieces. Nice one! Where will you put that? Very good! One last piece! Congratulations! First question. What propaganda strategy is used in the poster? Again, what propaganda strategy is used in the poster? Very good! The propaganda strategy used in the poster is what we called tagline. And what is that tagline in the poster? Can you tell it to the class? Very good. It says, help those on the front lines. Stay in. Stop the spread. Why do you think the frontliner is used in the poster? Next question is, why do you think the frontliner is used in the poster? Nice idea! The frontliner is used in the poster simply because it is relatable to everybody right now. Why is it relatable to everybody right now? 
Can you say to the class? Very good. Because we are experiencing a pandemic. And what is the pandemic that we are experiencing right now? What do we call it? Very good. It is the COVID-19. Next question. What is the message of the picture? Again, what is the message of the picture? Very good. It's a very nice idea. The message of the picture is simply saying that we need to stay at home. And by staying at home, we can help those frontliners. For our learning task number three, choose the appropriate answer to the following questions. Choose the appropriate answer to the following questions. Number one, who usually use propaganda techniques? One, who usually use propaganda techniques? A. Advertisers B. Media C. Politicians or D. All of them A. Advertisers B. Media C. Politicians or D. All of them Is it letter B, media? Nice try. You have another chance. Is it letter D, all of them? Very good. That's the correct answer. Number two. Which of the following is not a purpose of propaganda techniques? Again, which of the following is not a purpose of propaganda techniques? The word not is capitalized, so please take note of that. A. Convince B. Inform C. Persuade or D. Influence A. Convince B. Inform C. Persuade or D. Influence Is it letter D, influence? Nice try! You have another chance. To influence is one of the purpose of a propaganda. How about... Convince? Nice try! You have another chance. Convince is also a purpose of propaganda. How about B, inform? Very good. That's the correct answer. Number three. Which propaganda techniques uses words like everyone, everybody, or all? Which propaganda techniques uses words like everyone, everybody, or all? A, testimonial. B. Bandwagon C. Tagline or D. Name Calling A. Testimonial B. Bandwagon C. Tagline or D. Name Calling Is it B. Bandwagon? Very good! That's the correct answer! Next number what propaganda technique is used in the picture? What propaganda technique is used in the picture? Observe the picture carefully. A. Testimonial B. Bandwagon C. Tagline or D. Name Calling Is it letter C. Tagline? Very good! That's the correct answer. And what tagline is used by this picture? Very good! It's I'm loving it. Since you can now define, distinguish, and recognize propaganda techniques, let's have learning task number four. 
based on the propaganda strategies presented, create a poster on a bond paper or one whole sheet of paper that will convince everyone to be cautious with COVID-19. Based on the propaganda strategies presented, create a poster on a bond paper or one whole sheet of paper that will convince everyone to be cautious with COVID-19. Please remember that as you have your poster making, you will be graded based from the following criteria. Required elements. 4. The poster includes all required elements as well as additional information. 3. All required elements are included on the poster. 2. All but one of the required elements are included on the poster. 1. Several required elements were missing. Labels. All items of importance on the poster are clearly labeled with labels that can be read from at least 3 feet away. 3. Almost all items of importance on the poster are clearly labeled with labels that can be read from at least 3 feet away. 2. Many items of importance on the poster are clearly labeled with labels that can be read from at least 3 feet away. 1. Labels are too small to view or no important items were labeled. Graphics Relevance 4. All graphics are related to the topic and make it easier to understand. All borrowed graphics have a source citation. 3. All graphics are related to the topic and most make it easier to understand. Some borrowed graphics have a source citation. 2. All graphics relate to the topic. One or two borrowed graphics have a source citation. 1. Graphics do not relate to the topic or several borrowed graphics do not have a source citation. Attractiveness 4. The poster is exceptionally attractive in terms of design, layout, and neatness. 3. The poster is attractive in terms of design, layout, and neatness. 2. The poster is acceptably attractive though it may be a bit messy. 1. The poster is distractingly messy or very poorly designed. It is not attractive. Grammar 4. There are no grammatical or mechanical mistakes on the poster. 3. There are 1 to 2 grammatical or mechanical mistakes on the poster. 2. There are 3 to 4 grammatical or mechanical mistakes on the poster. 1. There are more than four grammatical or mechanical mistakes on the poster. To wrap up our lesson today, I want you to get a paper and on your paper, write your personal insights about the lesson using the prompts below. I understand that propaganda technique, blank. I realize that propaganda technique, blank. I need to learn more about blank. So you need to complete the three statements as part of our valuing activity. Let us all end this teaching and learning process with a short prayer. Dear God, thank you for another successful class. We thank you for our teacher who have shared his time and expertise with us. We thank you for our parents and guardians who were our partners in this learning session. May you still bless us with your divine wisdom so we could continue to learn amidst this pandemic. Amen. That is all for now, Grade 8. This has been Sir Joachim Dipimenjola your teacher of English, and don't forget, follow your WHLP carefully. Always write your name and section. Message me for any questions, and let your parents or guardians pass your outputs on your kiosk.